It's a new month, you guys, and you know what that means. Another episode of Cool Tech on their 50 bucks. But in today's video, we'll be focusing specifically on Cool Tech for your setup. So if you've been wanting to add a bit of functionality while improving the overall aesthetics of your setup, then you're gonna love today's video. Let's begin. So kicking off the episode is this little light bar I have hooked up right on top of the monitor. It's from a company called Cuntis, a pretty sus name, but a really cool product. I'm sure you guys have seen the BenQ monitor light bars everywhere. They have proven to be extremely popular, but the problem is they cost almost a hundred bucks, which is nuts. Why spend that much money when you can get something just as good for less than half the price? The light bar is a perfect way to add a bit of lighting to your setup without taking up any additional space on your desk, while also offering protection to your eyes during the night through warmer colors. What I love about this one in particular is the touch sensitive controls. You don't have to press any buttons, you just simply tap to change the settings. All the options are indicated in the front for convenience and you do get a few options to choose from. Starting from the left, we do have three different brightness levels, low, medium, and high, with the fourth tap shutting it off completely. We also have temperature control, four different settings, two for warm light and two more for cooler light. The power option is all the way on the right side and then you have the sensor switch, which is supposed to automatically adjust the brightness of the light based on the environment, but it doesn't really do anything for me. The light bar is powered by a USB-C cable that you will need to plug into the back of your PC or any USB power source and it gets clamped on the top of your display. You can even use this on your laptop if you wish using the provided spacer. Overall, a very solid light bar for the money that adds some nice lighting to your setup without taking up any additional space and also it does it without breaking the bank. If you're into RGB and music, then you're gonna love this next cool tech. These are 3D voice activated LED bars that adds really nice dynamic lighting to your setup. So before I talk about what these actually do and how you can change the lights, I do wanna talk about the included accessories real quick. So each bar is sold separately for $21 and they come with various mounting methods. Method number one is by using a basic stand. You simply insert the light bar in the plastic stand and place them wherever you want on a flat surface. Method number two is by using a cheaply made plastic tripod, which is my least favorite. And then we have the mounting method, which obviously is my favorite. Each bar comes with four square double-sided adhesive that you can use to slap these on anything you want. And because of how light they are, the possibilities are endless. Since the light wraps around the bar and spills over on both sides, I would strongly recommend only putting the adhesive on the bar itself so you don't end up covering any of the lighting. Each bar comes with a USB-C cable which is needed to charge the light bars. And from my experience, it took about an hour to charge one bar completely from 0%. So in terms of battery life on these light bars, it's actually pretty sad. Uh, I was only able to get an hour and 30 minutes of use per light bar from a full charge. It's actually pretty bad, yeah. So if you're planning on listening to music for more than an hour and 30 minutes nonstop with max brightness, just have it plugged in from the back, honestly. But um, if you dim it down to like 50% brightness, you can possibly squeeze two hours of use from these. You can check the battery life by doing a short press on the light bar located in the back. Each green bar that you see equates to 25% of battery. Long pressing the power button will turn it off and on and then you have two other buttons up top that gives you control over various colors and effects. But honestly, I would strongly advise against using that as it's very confusing and tedious to cycle through the dozens of effects it offers. Instead, just simply use the QR code in the back to download the app and sync each light bar together. One thing to keep in mind is that if you're adding more than one light bar to the app, you have to sync them one at a time. This means that the other light bar has to be turned off while you're syncing to avoid issues. Now, I can't go over every single lighting effect in this video, which will take another 30 minutes. So instead, I'm just gonna say that the amount of options that these light bars offer is pretty nuts. On the main menu, you can select any single color you want in case you want to match the setup's color scheme. But on the other menu, you actually have a massive list of cool effects to choose from. You can cycle between nine different effects from the menu up top, while the bottom menu gives you color choices. You also have the option of controlling the speed of the lighting and the sensitivity, which leads me to the one thing I don't like about these. The light bars are only voice activated, meaning you have to have music playing or any active sound in the same room in order for the lights to work. That is the only caveat with these light bars. You know, I would have loved to see one more option in the app where users can set a static color on these or maybe choose from one or two different effects. That way, when we're not listening to music, we can still have the lights on in our setup. 
but at the same time, I do get it. If they did add that feature, then you know it would just be like any other light bar out there. I guess they wanted to focus just on sound for this. With that said, I can see this being a deal breaker for a lot of people out there, especially considering that you can pick up a Tazumi light bar for around 10 bucks, which I featured in the previous Cool Tech video. But either way, a really cool light bar for RGB and music lovers out there. While there are a handful of really nice budget honeycomb mice out there that are wired, I picked up the Drevo Falcon because it's also wireless. Just above 90 grams, the Falcon features a high-end optical PixArt sensor with 2.4G wireless connectivity. I didn't expect much from gaming on a budget wireless mouse, but surprisingly the Falcon kept up with me on Warzone. There wasn't any noticeable latency and the mouse glides very well. I don't know if that's from the actual mouse itself or if it's from the awesome TechSource mousepad, which is available in a bunch of different colors and designs, by the way. If you guys want to pick one up, check out dealsource.tech store or just check the link below. I always love the fact that it comes with its very own software, which lets you customize the DPI, polling rate, a bunch of other settings, and of course, the RGB lighting. This mouse is a very solid alternative compared to some of the big boys out there. Every setup needs a source of input, whether it's from your gaming headset or your $2 Costco mic. After all, you do need a way to communicate with your teammates, letting them know they suck ass. I'm looking at you, Drew. But why settle with a crappy microphone when you can rock an entire mic setup for less than 50 bucks? That's right, you get the boom arm, shock mount, windscreen, pop filter, and the microphone all for around $42.23, which includes the 12% discount that Amazon gives you. The cool thing about this mic setup is that it's USB powered. No need to worry about downloading or installing drivers or using an audio interface. Just plug and play. The setup process is very simple. After clamping the base to your desk, slide in the neck piece, hook up the shock mount, and then insert your microphone inside. You do have the option of using the pop filter with the mic, but the windscreen alone is enough to prevent excessive popping. If you recall, I featured another microphone kit in a previous Cool Tech video, the Mayano Microphone Boom Arm Kit, which also costs about the same. Well, in terms of actual recording quality, they are practically the same. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if the same manufacturer is behind the microphone. However, with the FeeFine microphone bundle, you're actually getting more for the money. So in addition to the accessories I mentioned earlier, you also get a tiny tripod, a pivot mount, in case you don't want to use the shock mount, and extra black bands to replace the red bands that come by default. I don't know why they installed the red rubber band on here by default when it's not gonna match a lot of setups out there, but at least they gave you the option of replacing it if you want. All right, so now for the sound test. I'm gonna compare these with my $650 microphone and audio interface combo. I do have my custom painted Electro Voice RE20 hooked up to my Audient ID4 high performance audio interface just to show you guys the difference. Um, as you can see, I'm clearly talking directly into the RE20. So now we're gonna switch over to the FeeFind microphone. And as you guys can see, I do have the mic directly in front of my mouth with the windscreen inserted, but no pop filter. So now I'm gonna switch back over to the RE20 once again. Do keep in mind that all of this is raw audio recording without any editing. I'm actually recording directly to my Audacity software, which is a free program that anyone can download uh, to record voiceovers. But yeah, that pretty much concludes the audio comparison between both of these microphones. So yeah, the results are pretty conclusive if you're listening with headphones on, but it's definitely worth mentioning the amazing sound quality from this tiny little microphone, despite it being plug and play. I do wanna quickly brush on the build quality, which I think is really important for a microphone setup. This boom arm is practically the same boom arm as the one I talked about in the last Cool Tech video. Amazing build quality, very sturdy, especially at the tightening points. I mean, you can move this thing around and not have to worry about it collapsing or falling apart. So yeah, if you guys have been always looking for a solid microphone setup on their 50 bucks for your gaming or streaming setup, I highly recommend going with this. Now, if you're deciding between the Mayano microphone and the FeeFine, I would personally go with the FeeFine just because you get more value for the money. But when it comes to actual sound quality between the two, you can't go wrong with either one. All right, guys, I want you to quickly look underneath your desk. Tell me what you see. Probably a bunch of cables on the floor, right? You filthy animal. 
Here are a few ways you can improve the cable management of your setup, starting with a very simple and easy fix, using a cable box. A cable box is a simple way of hiding some of the cables along with your power strip that you have lying on the floor. You don't even have to pick this one up. Go on Amazon and search cable box. There are a ton of different sizes, colors, and designs that will fit the theme of your setup. I like this one in particular because it's a very clean, modern design, but more importantly, it has a vent up top which allows for hot air to escape. A lot of the other cable boxes don't have a cutout or vent near the top, so over time, all of your devices that are plugged in here will produce heat and all the heat will just get trapped up there, which can cause things to fail or shorten the lifespan of your devices. You could even take it a step further and mount the cable box upside down right underneath the desk, which looks even cleaner. To do this, just tape the cable box shut with some clear sided tape, and then you can add double sided adhesive to the bottom of the cable box. I recommend going with some VHB if your cable box is heavy, since those are the strongest. Then simply turn the cable box upside down and slap it underneath your desk. There you go, no more wires on the floor and it's a lot easier to clean or vacuum your carpet or tiles. Now if you're using a sit and stand desk, then you've probably given up all hope on cable management because let's face it, it is a lot harder to do compared to a static desk. Well, if that's the case, I got you covered. Sit and stand desks are not static. They can raise and lower, making it pretty difficult to manage cables because you need to always have some slack for the desk. With a cable spine, you can have the cables expand and retract with the desk. The installation is very simple. You first have to find the highest point you are going to raise your desk. From there, you just measure the distance from the bottom of the desk to the ground and make sure that it matches the length of the spine. You can add or remove however many sections you want to get your desired length. Then you install the head right under the desk by mounting it using some screws. And finally, you connect the bottom piece to the heavy anchor on the floor so that it doesn't move around. Because the way the spine is designed, you can easily add or remove cables whenever you want. In the end, you get to have all the cables in your setup rise and lower at the same time as your desk while improving the cable management altogether. And that will do for this month's Cool Tech episode. As always, everything talked about will be mentioned down below. If you guys are enjoying the Cool Tech series, maybe let me know by dropping a like if you want to help the channel out. And if you're new here, consider subscribing because I do host Cool Tech every single month. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in the next one.